In the developed world, data are often as plentiful and varied as food at a farmer's market. In developing nations, however, it's often quite different. The data just aren't there. But for farmers, knowing what crops are selling where and for how much is essential information. And for governments, knowing what crops grow where is critical for developing food policies for entire nations. Every single data point has a human story. That human story, the story that tells me how agriculture is linked to nutrition outcomes, how people make employment choices, whether they have access to healthcare, what determines that? Being able to answer these questions are important, but for me to be able to do that, I need to be here. I need to be able to observe it. I need to get to this place. It could be three hours away from the asphalt road. It could be 15 minutes away. For us, it doesn't matter. We need to get there. We need to get it done. In Uganda, Talib is working with local partners at the Bureau of Statistics to fill a data gap about living standards all across the nation. I've been working with Talib since 2009. It all uh, started with the need to have routine, regular, and reliable statistics. If you need to know where you are going and how you are moving there, then you need statistics. Talib, James, and colleagues have trained hundreds of Ugandans to collect accurate data from the household surveys. That might sound easy, but in a bustling big city like Kampala without street names and numbers, or in the remote countryside, capturing the data that can shape sustainable development policies is never easy. When we think about a typical household survey uh, interview in Kampala, in some sense, getting there is a sensory overload. When you're walking through the street of Kampala, you will find traffic jams. You will find people on motorcycles, getting off taxis, people from different walks of life, different ethnicities, people that speak different languages. You might find yourself in a very busy marketplace with all sorts of goods and produce uh, sold around you people doing all sorts of jobs. So at the end of the day, uh, doing surveys in urban Kampala becomes quite difficult. Here in Uganda, uh, roughly 20% of the population is estimated to be living in poverty. So for us to really end extreme poverty, we need to be able to benchmark it. We need to be able to measure it well and do that in a sustainable fashion. Most of the population is largely rural. We have about 20% living in urban areas, but 80% live in rural areas. Getting to our intended destinations is, uh, is really uh, one of the most challenging parts of our job. The thrill of, of getting to an enumeration area, one of 80,000 enumeration areas that we could have sampled from, picking that one and setting that target and going there uh, is a thrill in and of itself. And especially if you think about a landscape like this, which is just simply epic, is, is a romantic idea. Looking behind me, it really gives you that sense that agriculture is a key contributor to these people's lives. If you think beyond this community, if you think about Uganda, agriculture is the primary contributor to the gross domestic product. Right now, uh, we just got done measuring her parcel. Uh, so to capture the uh, area of the parcel, uh, the uh, enumerator is following the head of the household, uh, walking the perimeter of the parcel so that we can demarcate uh, the parcel boundaries. And as she's doing that, the enumerator has her GPS unit on, basically recording her track. GPS sensors get position data from satellites. But just as with surveys of trees, birds, or butterflies, it takes boots on the ground, feet in the field, to add that local knowledge without which the data would have no meaning. It takes both high-tech and humans. 
From the moment the interviewer asks a question, the response becomes a numerical data point. When you look at the numbers and you can see how that's changing our understanding of Africa, how that's changing the understanding of these economies that did not have these data before. We've been monitoring poverty since 1992. And in 1992, 56% of the population was poor in Uganda. And that number has reduced to 19.7%. It is statistics that informed poverty eradication action plan. How far have we moved? Where are we now? Even when we are long gone, you know, whoever comes to take over, we'll be able to still use the methods to monitor change and know well, this is where we moved from and this is where we are. And so, to me, collecting information and seeing it being used, that's the satisfaction I get.